Today we're going to be talking about how to sharpen a spoon knife. This can be intimidating at first, sharpening that curved knife, but I'm going to show you some techniques that I think will help you take the mystery out of it. Here's a proto prototype spoon knife from several years ago when we first started making spoon hooks. The inside of the curve is flat and it has a distinct bevel on the outside. This cuts really nicely, it works well, but it is a little bit difficult to sharpen. You have to maintain this, this flat bevel all the way around the curve and this flat inside to keep that polish just as a flat. It's a lot of material to polish. That's why we've settled on a design that includes a hollow back. This blade is forged into a hollow shape and we've eliminated the single bevel on the outside. We have a sort of a blended curve which matches the inside of the spoon quite well. But this hollow is for ease of sharpening and what it does is it gives us a reference point on these two guide rails that is, uh, keeps our, our sharpening flat and because we're going to sharpen here from this inside of the curve and leave the outside pretty well untouched except for polishing with a strop. What that does is it keeps our same angle of attack as we carve. As we sharpen along we still have that same angle of attack we're used to because we're leaving that outside the same geometry and just sharpening from the inside. All right, let's get started. For the first part of sharpening, I like to use sandpaper on a dowel. I just use automotive wet dry sandpaper uh, wrapped around the dowel, a little smaller than the diameter of our spoon knife curve. I'm gonna start with 400 grit here. This spoon knife is not terribly dull. If it was really dull or it needed uh, some nicks removed, I would go down to a 320 or maybe even 220 if I needed to remove a lot of material. But I'm going to use this 400 grit to start. Now, a little technique that helps is if you use a magic marker and darken these two guide rails on either side, what that does is it will show you exactly where you are sharpening and where you are not sharpening and show if you're holding it true. There are two secrets to sharpening. The one is consistent angle. Now we can debate over what that angle is for any given tool, but the point is you've got to maintain a consistent angle to do a good job of sharpening. And that's what these guide rails do. So I'm gonna hold the, the spoon knife still here on the bench, and I'm going to lay my dowel sandpaper on it and I'll, I'll rock back and forth and you can feel when it's touching both rails. So here I'm just on this cutting edge, here I'm just on the back and you can feel it positively lock in when it uh, touches both. That's where you want to be. And we will simply slide back and forth over the whole length of this interior. And as I get out to the end I'll twist to get that sharpening action. You want to be careful not to slide your sandpaper this way or the blade's liable to cut it. So we'll just go back and forth. And as you can see, it's all polished. We've removed all of our magic marker lines. And I can feel from the back side just this slightest, tiniest burr. That tells me we've gotten down to a zero edge and we are sharp. We just need to remove that burr and polish inside and out. For polishing, I like to use a leather strop, and I've got two different strops that I use. I have a flat strop and a curved one, and it's just rough out leather glued to either a flat board or a dowel. And then we'll load it with some type of polishing stropping compound. This is some I bought years ago. There's a variety of different brands and grits, but um, you can, you can find something that works at wherever you buy carving supplies, woodworking supplies. So once I've put some compound on it, I will take my knife here and just 
work that in, just butter that into the leather. And I don't do this every time I use the strop, just periodically to make sure that it stays loaded. And I'm also stropping my knife as I go. Notice that I'm pulling the knife back away from the leather. Again, if you move the blade into the leather, it's going to cut. All right, so now for polishing, I'm going to start with the outside where we have that burr. We'll remove the burr by laying our blade on the strop, and I'm gonna rock it till I get right down where it's on that cutting edge, just a little bit of pressure, and push it away from me. And now I'll check that. Yes, the burr is gone. It's nicely polished. We'll go to the inside. I'll use a similar motion that I did with the sandpaper. I'm going to lay this down on the bench and I'm going to go back and forth on that inside. It's my leather strop, making sure that I am full contact on both of these flats or guide rails. One more time on the back. And there we have it. I like to check the sharpness on my thumbnail. I'll just take this blade and touch it ever so lightly to my thumbnail. And if it grabs, I know that it's sharp. Now let's test it on some wood. I like to test mine on pine. The soft white pine, it's, um, it takes a sharp knife to carve this without tearing. So let's see what we've got. And that looks like a really good sharp edge. When I'm carving, I like to maintain the edge with the strop regularly, several times a day if I'm carving, and that eliminates the need for a more major sharpening. Remember, a sharp knife is a safe knife, and it also makes for a happy carver. Hope this has helped you learn how to maintain your spoon knives in tip-top shape.